Hello everyone, and welcome to the visual dungeon guide for Uea Wada Field Station. This dungeon was released in patch 7.1 and is unlocked via the level 100 main scenario quest, In Search of the Past. The first boss is Lindblum Zagnal. Electrical Overload is a group-wide attack that deals unavoidable damage to all party members. Healers be ready. The boss will charge towards one of the huge stone pillars at the edge of the arena and begin to cast gore. This will supercharge the pillar, causing several sets of multiple linear area of effects originating from it. The boss will then cast Caber Toss and target a random location on the battlefield to throw the pillar. You will need to maneuver as far away from this point as possible as this will create a large circular area of effect centered on that location. The pillar will continue with another several sets of multiple linear area of effects originating from its new placement. Lightning Storm will target all players with a circular area of effect for unavoidable damage, spread out to prevent overlapping damage from one another. The boss will then cast Gore once again, this time conjuring multiple raw electropes around the battlefield. You will need to focus on defeating these before their progress bar fills or they will detonate for heavy group-wide damage. The raw electropes will also periodically cause lightning strikes to appear randomly around the battlefield as circular area of effects. The boss will eventually end this stage by casting Sparking Fissure, another group-wide attack that deals unavoidable damage to all party members. These mechanics will now repeat until the boss is defeated. The second boss is Overseer Kanaloka. Dark Souls is a tank buster that deals heavy damage to the target. Use defensive cooldowns and shields to mitigate it. The boss will move towards the center of the battlefield and begin to cast Free Spirits, which is a group-wide attack that deals unavoidable damage to all party members. Healers be ready. This will also summon multiple specters which will fly across the battlefield in an arc-shaped area of effect several times, which you will need to maneuver between to avoid damage and knockback effects. The area will also now become sealed off, and the outer edges of the arena will become cursed, which should be avoided, as touching it will reduce your movement speed while also afflicting the bleeding and damage down debuffs. Phantom Flood is an arena-wide donut-shaped area of effect that damages anyone not close to the boss. This will also temporarily cause the cursed outer edge of the arena to greatly increase in size, filling Phantom Flood's area of effect. Dark 2 is an attack made of two sets of multiple cone-shaped area of effects, with the second set appearing after a short delay. You will need to wait for the first area of effects to detonate before maneuvering to the newly opened safe areas to avoid taking damage from the second set. The boss will then target three players with a circular area of effect for unavoidable damage. Spread out as best as possible in the limited space available to prevent overlapping damage from one another. Lost Hope will open three pathways that lead to the arena's edge and afflict all players with the temporary misdirection debuff. The boss will then immediately move to the very center of the battlefield and begin to cast Necrohazard, an attack that deals proximity-based damage. You will need to move to the very edge of the arena through any of the pathways while dealing with the dreaded misdirection debuff. The Necrohazard will also remove all cursed ground from the battlefield. Bloodburst is a group-wide attack that deals unavoidable damage to all party members. Healers be ready. The boss will move towards the center of the battlefield and begin to cast free spirits once again. This time, however, there will be the addition of players randomly becoming the target of a circular area of effect for unavoidable damage. Spread out to prevent overlapping damage from one another, while also maneuvering between the arc-shaped area of effects as before. The boss should then immediately begin to cast Dark 2. This time, however, one player will also become targeted by Soul Douse. You will need all players to stack and stand together to share the incoming damage while still maneuvering between the cone-shaped area of effects as before. These mechanics will now repeat until the boss is defeated. The third boss is Luna Piatti. The boss will face a random direction and begin to cast Raging Claw, a multiple strike half room cleave in the direction the boss is facing. You can easily avoid this attack by standing behind the boss. The boss will move towards the center of the battlefield and begin to cast Leperine Loaf. This will greatly reduce the arena size permanently 
and the outer edges of the arena will become a toxic sludge mire, which should be avoided, as touching it will afflict you with a heavy damage over time debuff. The first mechanic has no name and will be indicated by three circular area of effects, with each showing their pathed trajectory. Huge worm-like creatures will then burst out the ground and travel along the trajectory before burrowing themselves back into the ground at the end for a delayed second set of circular area of effects. While this is happening, the boss may also target all players with a circular area of effect for unavoidable damage. You will need to maneuver between the worms while also spreading out to prevent overlapping damage from one another. The second mechanic also has no name and will create multiple arc-shaped paths from the boss to the arena's edge. Then circular area of effects will begin following the spiral paths in the order they appeared. You will need to wait for the first area of effects to detonate before maneuvering to the newly opened safe areas. I personally found staying close to the arena's edge made this easier. The third and final mechanic of No Name will create one large spiral-shaped path which circular area of effects will follow, similar to the previous attack. You will need to maneuver into a safe area as it opens up to avoid taking damage. This may be tricky, but again, I personally found staying close to the arena's edge made this easier. The boss will eventually begin to cast Crater Carve. You will need to move to the arena's edge as this will cause a huge hole to appear in the center of the battlefield that will remain until the boss is defeated. Falling into this hole at any time is instant death. The boss will eventually cast Beastly Roar, an attack that deals proximity-based damage. You will need to maneuver around the hole to the opposite side of the arena from the boss. This will then have a circular area of effect chase you around the battlefield, which you will need to run from until you are back under the boss. This area of effect can chase you in either clockwise or anti-clockwise directions and appears to be random, so make sure to keep an eye out for it. The boss will then leap to a nearby location before casting Raging Claw. You will need to quickly move so you are standing behind the boss to avoid the huge cleave attack. Immediately after Raging Claw has finished casting, all players will become targeted with a circular area of effect for unavoidable damage. Spread out to prevent overlapping damage from one another. Then, one player will become targeted, which will require the group to stack and stand together to share the incoming damage. Sonic Howl is a group-wide attack that deals unavoidable damage to all party members. Healers be ready. Slabber is a tank buster that deals heavy damage to the target. Use defensive cooldowns and shields to mitigate it. These mechanics will now repeat until the boss is defeated. I hope you've all been doing well. Thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed the videos, please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, take care of yourself and each other.